Estimating probabilities is a two-step process. We begin by calculating the mean and the standard deviation of a sample of data. We then examine the normal distribution that has the same mean and standard deviation as our data. For example, we might have a sample of data that looks like this. We calculate the sample mean, the sample standard deviation. That tells us what the normal distribution looks like that most closely approximates this data. We can then remove the data and focus on this normal distribution. And we can ask questions like, what is the area to the left of a certain point, or to the right of a certain point, or within a certain range? These areas are our estimates of the probabilities of the random variable taking on certain values. What's important to remember is that the sample mean and the sample standard deviation that we calculated are themselves estimates of measures that we would like to have but don't. That's the population mean and the population standard deviation. The problem here is that when we have very few observations, the sample mean and the sample standard deviation are less accurate estimates of the population mean and the population standard deviation. The less accurate these estimates are, the more uncertain we are as to the correct shape of the normal distribution. Consider this example. We want to estimate the probability of someone receiving a monthly cell phone bill in certain ranges. So we begin by collecting data on monthly cell phone bills. The first person we ask tells us that his bill last month was $70. So we have one observation. The sample mean of our data is 70. We then ask somebody else. And this second person says that his bill last month was $35. We now have two observations. But notice what's happened. Our sample mean dropped from 70 to 52.5. This is a significant change. And it came about as a result of our adding just one observation to the data set. So let's ask a third person. This third person had a bill of $93. Adding this person's bill to our data set causes the mean to change from 52.5 to 60, and the standard deviation to change from 24.7 to 29.2. These are relatively large changes in the sample mean and the sample standard deviation, all brought about by the fact that we simply added one observation to the data set. We can add a fourth person to the data set whose bill was $130. And again, we see a relatively large change in the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Now notice what happens. As we continue to add data to our data set, we start to reach a point where additional observations don't have much of an effect on the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. For example, when we have eight observations, our sample mean is 72, and the sample standard deviation is 33.8. If we add one more observation, our sample mean changes a little bit to 73, and our sample standard deviation changes a little bit to 31.8. The more observations we have, the less sensitive the sample mean and the sample standard deviation are to changes in the number of observations. That is, as the number of observations increases, our sample mean and sample standard deviation become more accurate estimates of the population mean and the population standard deviation. The more accurate these estimates are, the better able we are to fit the appropriate normal distribution to our data. So what happens if we're simply stuck with a small number of observations? The solution is to use the t-distribution instead of the normal distribution. The t-distribution attempts to compensate for the inaccuracies that arise due to the small number of observations. For example, suppose you want to predict the probability of your earning at least a B in a course. You find three students who took this course before, and you ask them what grades they received. The three students earned a 65%, a 69%, and a 73%. You now have a sample of three observations. The sample mean is 69, the sample standard deviation is 4. If we were to use the normal distribution, we would take a normal distribution with the mean of 69 and the standard deviation of 4 and ask questions about that normal distribution. That would then answer for us the probability of getting a B in the course. The problem, of course, is that because we have only three observations, this sample mean of 69 and sample standard deviation of 4 may not be accurate estimates of the population mean and population standard deviation. And to the extent that these estimates are inaccurate, we may end up looking at the wrong normal distribution. So the solution is to use a t distribution with two degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are the number of observations in the sample minus 1. So to go back to the beginning, 
we have three observations. We calculate the sample mean of 69, the sample standard deviation of 4. Because we have so few observations, rather than examine a normal distribution, we'll examine a t distribution with a mean of 69, a standard deviation of 4, and 2 degrees of freedom. The probability of earning a b or higher is the area from 80% to the right on this t distribution, or 5.5%. Notice that as the number of observations rises, the tails on the t-distribution become smaller. The t-distribution itself begins to look a lot like the normal distribution. So that if you have more than 30 or 40 observations, for most practical purposes, there isn't a meaningful difference between the t-distribution and the normal distribution. So this raises a question. Why bother with the t-distribution at all? Why not simply go and collect more data? The problem is that sometimes acquiring data can be extremely expensive. For example, when automobile manufacturers conduct crash tests, they take a brand new car and run it into a concrete barrier and measure various things that have happened to the car. This is one observation, and the cost of acquiring this observation was the destruction of a brand new car. That is, every single observation is going to cost somewhere between twenty and $30,000. So clearly, it becomes too expensive to collect hundreds of observations. Instead, we'll collect a few observations, and rather than using the normal distribution to answer questions about the random variable, we'll use the t-distribution instead. To find the value under the t-distribution in Excel, use the t.dist function. t.dist takes three arguments. The first is the t-score, the second is the degrees of freedom, and the third is the word true. The t-score is the value we are examining minus the sample mean divided by the sample standard deviation. The degrees of freedom is the number of observations minus 1. The t.dist function returns the area under the t-distribution to the left of the value we are examining. So returning to the problem of estimating the probability of earning a B or better in a course, we have three observations. We want to know what is the probability of earning an 80% or better. 80% is the value we are examining. So the t-score is 80 minus the mean of 69 divided by the standard deviation of 4, or 2.75. We have three observations, so degrees of freedom is 3 minus 1, or 2. The area to the left of 80% is 94.5%, which means the area to the right is 5.5%. That is, we estimate there's a 5.5% chance of any given student earning an 80% or better in this course based on the three observations we have in front of us.